Tsunami Studios. The Blue Flame issue number one. You know, folks, I don't talk about vault comics a lot, if ever. Have I talked about a vault comic? I'm trying to think. I don't think I have. They're really consistent. I like them. They do a lot of experimental shit. They're like Ahoy Comics. They're like Boom Studios. And with that, again, I will plead to the cre- to the creative people over at Vault Comics. Hit me up, guys. I'd love to write a book for you. Whatever it is, I'll do it for you, babes. Let's do it. Let's get let's get going. That was a weird, whatever. Let's get into it. So the Blue Flame, Christopher Cantwell is at it again. I, I've been raving about his Doctor Doom, about his Iron Man. Now he's doing a creator-owned book. I'm very excited to see what this was, and man, was it fun! It is. If it was, it's classic. If you like your old Buck Rogers, your old Star Trek, just your old John Carter's people in space just having fun, you're gonna love this. Because that's what it is. It's like a, an old strange adventures, a mystery in space, just going around doing stuff. So we open up the book with a little bit of a backstory on who this guy is. We see his name's like Sam Brosim, Bro, Bro Sam, I think. Sam Brosim, something like that. He's uh, He found like this weird alloy or this weird metal called Cobaltum. And suddenly he became like this, this superhero who can go into space and do all this cool stuff. And he became the Blue Flame. And we're seeing what he's up to when we're following one of his adventures. So we're in the vacuum of space. He doesn't really know where he is. And he's just kind of like falling around, flying, figuring everything out. He sees like this weird planet somewhere. And he's like, hmm, that could be a good place just to like wet my whistle for a second. Get myself situated and going on here. So he kind of flies down. He lands on the planet and... He's like, okay, those structures over here clearly are made by someone or something. Oh, look, these people are here to talk to me. I said Star Trek because I'm like, there are some really old school science fiction themes being explored here. It just reminded me of some 60s Star Trek. I'm just like rewatching that. So I'm like, there we go. It's presented here. It's your classic stuff. I love it. So these creatures like, yeah, you're going to go work for our for our service. Pretty much enslave you. They're like, yeah, you're, you're doing it, dude. Come on, you can go do it. He's like, no, nah, I'm good, guys. And they try to shoot him and they get into a little fight. But they got a gun on him, so he has to comply. And he heads down like this weird corridor and he enters into this hall and it's like a weird bright light in a stadium. You, you've seen this a million times before. It's a great homage to those stories where you see this stuff presented to itself. And we see that he's standing in front of the tribunal consensus and he's just like, you're here to represent your planet. See if you can stand for it. Welcome to your trial. And you're like, damn, we'll give back to that at the end here. Because before that, we need what I, I think this is either, they don't really explain it in the book what it is. So I think it's one of two things. This is a flashback leading to the events of the beginning of the book, or this is what's happening to the character right now in the stuff at the beginning of the book is happening inside his mind uh it's up to you to decide what you see in there but we'll get to it so sam wakes up in wisconsin snowing outside his neighbor was like look at all this snow i don't know how wisconsin people talk but i just tried something weird there don't know why so he's like yeah there's a lot of snow so he starts whistling while he works and cleaning it up he's having such a good time and his neighbor's like what's wrong with you <laughs> that, i don't know if that was offensive but i did i tried an accent there if you didn't pick it up i guess that's a good thing Let's forget I said it. Then we see Sam at work, and he's like, yeah, I could fix this machine for you, buddy. No problem. So he's tightening the bolts, getting everything done. It's a hot day. He opens up his trunk to put his tools away, and we see the blue flame suit in there, and he puts on the gear. He's wearing it while he's driving down the street. A couple of fans are looking at him like, yeah, dude, what's up? He waves to them, looking like Speed Racer here for some reason. I love it. It's just, this is so classic storytelling. I love every second of it, man. It's great. So then we cut to a scene with a couple of characters, and it's just like, a okay, pregnancy alert? Yes. D is one of the women. She's pregnant, and we see Mateo, and they're like, okay, how are we going to do with this baby kind of thing? Who are these people? We don't know. Mateo and D are having a baby. Congrats, guys. <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. So then we see Blue Flame heads into this club room and we see the Night Brigade and it's just a bunch of other characters like Swiftbird and Thea and the Crimson vis- Visage, Visage, the Feet, bunch of cool dudes just hanging out, having fun. And we see like their lives. It's like a, I think it's like a low budget superhero team kind of Watchmen-esque at the beginning there. 
bunch of dudes hanging out trying to figure out what to do. You know, one of them's like, I got an action figure made about me. It's a custom, but hey, it's cool. I love it. Nothing beats a reference to a guy's Instagram page where he makes custom toys because that's the world I live in. I look at that stuff all the time. So that made it to comic book. That's really fun. All the characters are just figuring everything out. We see Thea and Blue Flame have a little bit of chemistry going on. They're just kind of talking to each other about like they like each other, but do they really like each other or just the character they play? It's cute. It's very cute stuff. But, you know, they just ordered a pizza. They're all going to go on a trip because they got somewhere to go. They're going to an auto show and they're just like, I guess they're helping selling cars or something. I don't know what they're doing there, but hey, they're all here just having fun, hanging out, getting autographs and shit. You know, I love it. We're in an era where every single superhero thing is just like exploiting the idea of being a superhero where you're just literally going to pose for photos now and, you know, sell shit. I'm fine with that. I think that's it makes sense. Like you'd want to do that stuff if you were a superhero. So I'm not against it. It works fine for what this is. I like it. Blue Flame's kind of talking to the Crimson Visage. Like you, you okay? All this is kind of weird. He's like, yeah. It's just like, I hope I don't see anybody I know out there, and they figure out who I am. So everything's looking great. They're just all smiling, having a good time. Then all of a sudden, there's like a gunshot going off in the crowd and people start getting shot and killed. We fade to black and we just cut to see what's happening with the blue flame. And he's like in a hospital bed and this is where we're like, okay, is this a dream? Is this what's happening on the trial? I think it's kind of a dream the way they imply it. But we see one of the tribunal consensus guys is standing there like, you will decide the fate of your earth if it deserves to fight on classic star trek classic buck rogers classic adam strange that's exactly what this character is and my goodness is it fun i enjoyed this a lot it's very strong very well written the characters are cool the story is interesting if you are a fan of like these retro style characters you're gonna love it because it's exactly what you'd want it's exactly one of those characters coming into prominence in a new way and it's really cool to see it's an indie book. I recommend checking it out. It's it's just a really fun read, really different than a lot of stuff on the shelves. It's it's so cool. It's a great homage to classic science fiction, and I could definitely see myself reading more of this. And if the numbers are here on the channel, I will definitely be reviewing more of this book. So, The Blue Flame, issue number one, I am going to give an 8 out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.